Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. If you're planning for retirement or just figuring out how much you want to save, you've probably heard of something called a withdrawal rate. But here's the thing. There's something about this that seems to trip people up and I get questions and comments about it all the time. One of the most common ones goes a little something like this. The bigger the rate of withdrawal, the smaller the portfolio needs to be. That does not compute. Wouldn't the opposite be true? And honestly, I get it. Intuitively, this seems backwards, but this misunderstanding is so common, but it's important that we get it right because it not only shapes how you think about your number, but how confidently you approach retirement. So in this video, I want to walk you through exactly why a higher withdrawal rate means you can hit your income target with a smaller nest egg. But, and this is just as important, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a better strategy. Let's break it down. Let's start by clearing up this common misconception because it's one I see all the time. People assume if you're withdrawing a higher percentage that you would naturally need more saved, but it's actually the opposite that's true. Here's why. The withdrawal rate tells you what percentage of your portfolio you're pulling out every single year. And what we're solving for is the income need in retirement. Let's say that your goal is to withdraw $30,000 per year. If you're using a 4% withdrawal rate, you'd need $750,000 in investments. If you're using a 7% withdrawal rate, you'd only need about $430,000 in investments. Why? Because you're trying to hit that same $30,000 withdrawal. When you're willing to withdraw a higher percentage, you need a smaller portfolio to get you there. So it's not that you need more money for a higher withdrawal rate, it's that you're pulling more aggressively from a smaller pot of money to hit the same income goal. The only time you need a larger investment portfolio is when you're utilizing a lower withdrawal rate, aiming to be more conservative and making your portfolio last longer. Let's flip it around with one more example. Say you already have $750,000 in an investment portfolio. At a 4% withdrawal rate, you'd take out $30,000 per year. At a 7% withdrawal rate, you'd take out $52,500 per year. Same portfolio, different withdrawal, very different outcome. But here's the catch. $52,500 might feel great in the short term, but keep in mind, this is a far more aggressive withdrawal and you run the risk of running out of money if it's too aggressive for your portfolio to sustain that long term. So that's the trade-off. Your withdrawal rate determines how much income you get to pull from your portfolio, but it also determines how long your portfolio is going to last. Now let's talk about the real root of the confusion. When someone says, if I'm withdrawing 7%, wouldn't I need more money saved than if I'm withdrawing 4%? They're actually thinking about this from a different perspective than what we're talking about right here. They're imagining a situation where you want more income in retirement, and they're thinking in order to get more income and have a higher withdrawal rate, you need a bigger portfolio. That framing isn't wrong. If you're aiming to increase your retirement income, yes, you may need a larger portfolio and a higher rate of withdrawal in order to do that sustainably. But that is not the same thing as saying a higher rate of withdrawal requires a bigger portfolio. Commonly, we're solving from the opposite direction. We're asking if your target income is $30,000 per year, or whatever it may be, how much do you need to have saved? And that depends on the withdrawal rate that you choose. And that's why as the withdrawal rate goes up, the portfolio needed to hit that income goal goes down. Both perspectives are valid, it just depends on what you're solving for. Are you solving for how much income you can get based on your savings? Or are you solving for how much you need to save based on your income goal? Sometimes it helps to flip the question. If I have $430,000 saved and I want to withdraw $30,000 per year, what withdrawal rate is that? In that case, it's about 7%. So yes, you can take $30,000 a year from a $430,000 portfolio, but you're withdrawing nearly 7%. But wait, is 7% even a good idea? 
There's a deeper issue here. A 4% rate of withdrawal is generally considered safe for a longer retirement, say a retirement that lasts 30 years or more. And I'm not saying that a 4% rate of withdrawal is perfect, but what I am saying is that a 7% rate of withdrawal is riskier because it's a higher rate of withdrawal. It means you do have a higher risk of running out of money over time. It may only work for shorter retirements, say someone retiring at age 67 and expecting to live to the age of 80. Or maybe you have other income streams like social security or a pension that cover more of your income needs later in life. And maybe you just don't need your portfolio to last as long. Let's reframe the insight. Yes, the higher your withdrawal rate, the fewer years your portfolio is likely to last if you're relying solely on your savings. But if you're comfortable with a higher rate of withdrawal, then you don't need as large of a portfolio. If you're comfortable with more aggressively spending it down, if you don't need it to last as long, you can use a higher rate of withdrawal. This is exactly why financial planners run different scenarios. It depends on your situation. Let's look at how this plays out depending on your retirement timeline. If you're 70 years old and planning on, say, a 15-year retirement, maybe Social Security covers more of your expenses than you thought, or maybe you're just planning on a shorter retirement for whatever reason, you could very well withdraw 6, 7, maybe even a higher percentage of your portfolio because it's not a portfolio you need to last 30 years. But instead, let's say you retire at 60 and you're hoping that your money will last for, say, a 35-year retirement. Well, at this point, you want to be more conservative. Maybe you use a withdrawal rate that's more in the ballpark of that often cited 4% because you need this money to last for a longer duration. You want to be a little bit more conservative. You want it to withstand the volatility of the market. You want it to last for longer. It's not just about math, it's how long do you need your portfolio to support you and how much risk are you willing to take? Here's why this works. You're solving for one key question. How many years does your portfolio need to support withdrawals? If the answer is not that long, you can be more aggressive. If the answer is decades, you're gonna wanna be more conservative. And as I tend to say in these videos, the answer depends on your personal circumstance and your situation. A 7% withdrawal rate assumes you'll draw down your portfolio at a faster pace. It also assumes the portfolio likely won't sustain as long of a retirement. You may be okay with depleting your portfolio, or maybe you expect other income streams to take over. On the other hand, a 4% withdrawal rate is built to preserve your principal longer, to withstand bad market years, and to support you for 30 years or more in retirement. Here's the bottom line. A higher withdrawal means a shorter time horizon, which means a smaller nest egg needed. But that's why it's riskier. It might not be that these higher rates of withdrawal are necessarily built for longevity, for a portfolio that is supposed to sustain a retiree over the course of several decades and the market volatility that that can bring. Now, it's also important to know that withdrawal rates don't have to be fixed forever. Some retirees choose what they call a dynamic withdrawal strategy where you adjust your withdrawals over time based on market performance, spending needs, or simply life changes. You might start off withdrawing more early on in retirement when you're the most active. Maybe you travel, maybe you have larger expenses. Then as retirement goes on, maybe you scale back and maybe you have other income sources that kick in at this time. Maybe it's social security, so it takes more pressure off your portfolio. Maybe the market dips, and so you respond to that by reducing your rate of withdrawal, or maybe you pause your withdrawals altogether. This type of strategy enhances your flexibility and really increases the longevity odds of your portfolio. The key here is that your withdrawal strategy does not have to be rigid and fixed. It is meant to evolve with you over time. And at the end of the day, this is your retirement. And while numbers like 4% or 7% or whatever the heck percentage you want to use are helpful as a starting point, what you want to do is run the actual numbers based on your lifestyle, your comfort, your risk, and your investments. This might mean using a free online calculator, creating a simple spreadsheet, or working with a financial planner to map it all out. Whatever route you take, the goal is to make sure the plan fits you, not the other way around.
because what it looks like for someone to do an early retirement at, say, 55 with no additional income sources is very different than, say, someone retiring at 65 with Social Security and a pension. We really need to have a personalized plan when it comes to our own retirement. So you absolutely need less saved if you're willing to withdraw at a greater rate, but you risk burning through your portfolio more quickly. But it's a trade-off between the size of your nest egg and the number of years you need it to last. And understanding that trade-off is the key to retiring with confidence versus just flying blind. So what are your thoughts on this? Leave them in a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye. If you're planning for retirement, it's a bad place to get stuck. I got three words in. If anybody's wondering, I did figure out my thermostat. <laughs> I didn't figure it out so much as ChatGPT did. In order to do that, do 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 that. <laughs> do do that. Dooms, you'll draw down, draw, why am I saying withdrawal? It's not drawl, it's draw down, draw down. Don't put an L in it. Talking to you, Aaron. Framing isn't, I hit the mic, I'm sorry. That, that framing, that framing isn't wrong. If you're, oh my goodness. <laughs> Muted, shh, bye. If you hear that beep right on the bye, I don't care. I don't care. We're going with it.